Hi there, we're going to look at how to build an app that you can use when going shopping to keep track of what you're shopping for and what you found, what you've already uh, obtained. So let's create a new project. I'll call this going shopping. All right, I'm going to change the title. I'll call it going shopping. And so we've got a nice uh, header up there. So with this app, we want to have a way of entering. These are items that we're shopping for, and we want to be able to see a list of those items as well. So we're going to begin with uh, the familiar. So we'll put in a horizontal arrangement. And within that, let's put in a text box and a button. And this is where we're going to add things. So I'm going to rename text box as uh, shopping item name. And then I'll rename button one as add button. And I'll change the text on button one as well. And then I'm going to adjust uh, the width to be fill parent. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this text box. So here uh, for the hint, we'll say enter our item name will be the hint. And let's go ahead and fill the height and width of the parent. And so that should make for a nice text box there. So now that we've got a way somewhere where we can place items that we want to look at, we need to have a way of actually examining them. And to that end, we're going to make use of what's called a list view. So a list view lets you have a, a sequence of items, as many as you want, and it'll display all of them for you. And you can even click on them and make some things happen uh, when you do that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the height to fill the parent. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with the colors a bit. For some reason, by default, the background is black with white text, and I prefer uh, a white background with dark text. And so I just adjusted the background color up here and the text color down there in order to make it look the way that I would prefer. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start programming this. So we're going to go ahead and create the code to add items to the list, and then we'll start thinking about removing them. So if I come down here to add button, whenever the add button is clicked, we want to add to our list view whatever happens to be in shopping item name. So let's think about how we're going to do that. It's a little bit tricky and a little bit subtle, and this is going to require uh, looking at some new ideas that we haven't really looked at before. The first of which is the idea of creating a variable. So when we create a variable, we're saying there is something that I want to be able to refer to within the context of a block. In this case, we need to get the list of items that are already present in our list view, and we'll call this list items. Now what we're going to do with this is we're going to add to that list the item that is in our text field here. And to do that, we need to go to the built-in blocks and use list operations. And we're going to use the add items to list block. So what are we adding to? We're going to use get items to reference this variable. So notice this is very similar to an input in a procedure, um, but it's something that comes from somewhere else. In this case, we're getting the list of things that are present within our list view. So the item we want to add is the text from shopping item name. Now, once we've done this, we now need to tell the list view, here is your updated list. So we need to set the elements of list view to be uh, items here. 
so essentially what we're doing is we initialize our variable items to be a copy of what's in our list view. We then modify the copy and then we tell the list view look, you know, change yourself to look like this copy. So you can't edit it directly. You always have to edit it indirectly in this way. You get a copy, you change the copy, and you save the copy back out. So let's go ahead and test it out. So I am going to start up here my App Inventor Companion app. I am scanning the QR code now. And it's slowly coming up. And here's our app. So I'm going to go ahead and enter an item name. I'm going to start with bananas. So I'm going to enter bananas. I click add. And now bananas is on my shopping list. And I can add some other things. Well, it's kind of annoying, right? Because bananas is still there. I'd really like it to go away before... Um, I, I type the next thing. Fortunately, we can do that. So we're going to go to set shopping item name. So once we've got um, our item added to our list, we can empty the text like so. All right. So I'm going to go back into the app. And now I want apples on my shopping list. And now I've got apples and now it cleared out very nicely. I think I also want some cheese and let me go ahead and add that. Now, uh, what about removing items? So that's, that's really the logical next step is once we find we are able to add items to the list, we'll also want to be able to remove items from the list as we locate them. So let's go back here and start thinking about what that's going to look like. Uh, something you may have noticed, by the way, while you were playing with it, is that the font sizes are different on the text box and the list view. So the list view uses a text size of 22. So I'm going to go ahead and change my text entry there to also be 22 so that the appearance is just a little bit more consistent. So now we need to add a delete button. I'm actually going to add it down here at the bottom of the app. And so we'll call that delete. I'm going to rename this delete button. All right, so deleting is a little bit tricky, um, but we're going to be able to do it. Um, we're, we'll find a straightforward way to do it. So. When the delete button is clicked, the first thing we're going to do is get, once again, a copy of our list views elements. So this looks very similar to what we had to do for the add. So I've got my own copy. And when I'm done, I'll be updating that according to deleting whatever is present. So how do I know what has been selected? In list view, there is uh, something called the selection index. So that's a number saying which element of the list have we picked? What element has been highlighted? So uh, we're going to be making use of this with the delete button to figure out which item to remove. So if we go over to lists, we can find the remove list item block, uh, which is what we'll be using here. And I'm going to rename that variable to be items. So we will get the items list and the index we'll delete is just whatever selection index happens to be. Once we've done that, we then update our list view to the version of the list where that item is no longer present. And at that point, uh, we're good to go, we believe. So let's go ahead and connect the App Inventor Companion. And this will just take a moment. Scan the QR code here. Okay. 
and it's connected. Now, notice um, everything is gone. I didn't save any of the data between runs of this. So something we'll do in a few minutes is we're going to use TinyDB to save the shopping list. So in the meantime, I'm just going to add a few items. So I'm going to add an apple. I'm going to add banana. I'm going to add cheese. And I think I'm going to add some berries so i've got apple banana cheese and berries now i can click on an item like i just clicked on cheese for instance and now when i hit the delete button it goes away that's pretty cool so now i just have apple banana and berries and i can of course add more stuff so for instance i could add salsa and chips to my shopping list and so now it's a little longer again but now i might be rethinking you know i'm really more into chips and salsa less into healthy food so you know what apple is going to go away delete now you might also be wondering well, what happens if we hit the delete button and nothing is highlighted let's find out it just deleted whatever was on the top of the list because the last time I had selected something, it was what was ever on top. What if I select chips, hit delete? So now the question is, is it going to delete berries or salsa? And the answer is, wait a minute. It doesn't delete either one. It gives me this error message that I tried to remove item three of a length of a list of length two. So what does that mean? means that the last time I hit delete, the selection index was three and it wiped out the item that was there, but the selection index never changed. And so now it's just sitting there trying to delete item three, which isn't even there anymore. I, I have to click another item for the selection index to change. So when I do that, then it works just fine. So there are really a couple of different things going on here. First, I need to know whether um, I've got some items selected, whether there's a valid selection index. And secondly, once I've deleted an item, I need to reset the selection index so that it doesn't keep deleting without me first picking something. So this requires us to write some code that is conditional, that depends on the situation and the control blocks can help us there specifically the if then block is really really helpful so we only want to do this stuff if our selection index is valid now how do we know if we've got a valid selection index if we don't select anything then the selection index will be zero. But if we've selected something, then if it's like the first item, it'll be a one. If it's the second item, it'll be a two and so forth. So only if the selection index is greater than zero, do we wanna do anything. So I'm gonna go over to math and this third block down with the equal sign is the comparison block. So it's not just equals, it's also not equals, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to. Well, I only want to delete something if my selection index happens to be greater than zero. So I'm gonna put that there. So now once I've deleted something, I'm going to change my selection index to B0 so that nothing is selected anymore. So I'm going to go over to list view and I'm going to set my selection index. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to set my selection index to B0, like so. All right, let me try this app out again. So. Let me go ahead and scan my QR code. Okay, so the app's starting up. 
course, there's nothing there. So let me go ahead and add a couple of items. Berries, apples, bananas. Okay, so fruit, healthy food. Okay, so now if I hit delete, nothing happens. Why? Because let's look at this if. It says if the list view selection index is greater than zero, then delete something. But it's not greater than zero because I haven't selected anything. So now let me select the last item on the list, bananas. So now when I hit delete, bananas goes away. Now, if I hit delete again, I don't get that annoying error message like I did last time. Why? Because we reset the selection index to be zero. So, so far, so good. This is working pretty well, but the list goes away every time the app exits. And so we need to use TinyDB to save it for us. So let's go ahead and uh, you know, close up user interface layout, go to storage and grab a tiny DB and add a tiny DB to this app. You might remember from the last time we used a tiny DB that we need to set up something when our screen initializes. Specifically, we need to set the namespace of our tiny DB. And so why don't we go ahead and call this namespace the uh, shopping namespace. So that's the realm of database that we're going to be using. Now, something else that we're going to want to do is at the start of the app, we'll want to retrieve our list from the database. So let's. Um, we're going to do a call tiny db with the goal of setting the elements of our list view be um, the result of asking the database for some information so now what if it's not there what if it's the first time we've run this we can go to lists and ask it to create an empty list so let's decide on the tag what's the name of this list going to be um, we'll just call it groceries so whenever i call the get on groceries if it's there it'll load up my list view and if not it'll create an empty list for me so now what we have to do is save the contents of the list whenever we um add or delete from it so we always want our database to be up to date so we're going to use a store value block to do that. And so in that block, we will store the groceries tag. And the value we will store is whatever happens to be in our list view. So if we place this block over here right after we have updated our list elements. Let's go ahead and make another copy of it down here. Then that should take care of making sure that everything has been stored nicely for us in the database. So let's go ahead and do a connect. So scanning the QR code. All right. So it is setting up and there. Okay. So right now it's blank. And so I'm going to add some items. So I want some bananas. I want some apples. So far I've got bananas and apples. Uh, let's add some oranges and definitely add some raspberries. So I am adding raspberry. Well, didn't mean to do that. Um, I'm adding raspberries to my shopping list. All right. Um, before I go, I realize, you know, I really, really don't want oranges. So I'm going to delete oranges. And now I am going to close the app. So I'm going to stop this application. I'm going to make it go away. Oh, yeah, I have to click stop and exit. All right, it goes away, and now I'm going to restart App Inventor. 
and reconnect once again. So now I will scan the QR code. And when I do so, my three items are still there. And so now I've got uh, a persistent shopping list. So this is a really, really useful app. You could put this, code this on your phone. You could use it this afternoon to go to the grocery store. It's already that useful an app, thanks to the use of storage and thanks to the use of lists. So just to review what we went over today, we have learned about a lot of new stuff. We learned about the list view, we went ahead and changed the background and text color uh, to make it, a, in my opinion, a little nicer aesthetically. We likewise uh, created add and delete buttons that add and delete items from the list. And to do that, we had to learn about lists and that there are these special blocks to add items to lists and remove items from lists. But then it doesn't always, it shouldn't always happen that a delete succeeds. There's got to be something there to delete and you have to have picked something to delete. And so for that, we learned about the if then block, very, very useful block. And uh, then we made use of our tiny DB as well. See you next time.